my Bricklink store is finally open. So you can head over to Bricklink, type in Master Moldy. Don't forget the space between Master and Moldy and you can find the store and all the pieces which have been double checked, triple checked, quadruple checked, just to make sure they're all on the store. And all of my pieces are in this one unit just behind me. This one on the top right is all for Bricklink. And I'll be honest, I might need a second one at some point soon. I don't have any space on the wall to have a second brick link drawer unit. But some of these drawers are really, really full and we will also be taking a look at that in a second. But first off, if you don't know what a brick link store is, just real quickly for those of you that don't, it's a store where I can sell Lego bricks per piece. You can also sell sets, minifigures, and actually all of my minifigures are bagged up, I haven't assembled them, but it's a marketplace where fans of Lego, mostly fans of Lego, some people trying to get a profit, but mostly fans of Lego can sell individual pieces they don't want, they don't need. For instance, all these sets I picked up in a sale, they've been on shelves on their sale price for a few weeks, so I thought this is the perfect time to open a Bricklink store, and the money I get from this will be spent on more sets either to fill the Bricklink store, because I will need to replace the pieces or to buy sets to review here on the channel that perhaps like the Bark Speeder, like the Sarlacc Pit, I wouldn't be buying in the first place. So the fact that I can pick up the sets with the profits from the Bricklink store here is going to be really handy for future reviews on the channel. So of course I could be recording my screen and using my cursor to point out all the things that I want to show you, but instead I'm going to record the monitor, I feel like it's a lot easier to get a closer look at some of the pieces, even though some of them barely show up. That looks like a hair on my screen, but this is my Bricklink store, as I said, Master Moldy with a space between them. And I've actually got 31 reviews already by the looks, but that's from me buying bricks. I think you do, before opening a Bricklink store, have to make one purchase. And I'm not sure if you need the review from it, but it's always handy once you've bought off a store. As a buyer, I always leave a review, but you can see down the bottom left here, I have a total of 1,545 items in 384 different lots. So there's a few different things to pick from, including these five minifigures along the bottom, which the minifigures might not be all that appealing to you, but some of the hair pieces used and that flat cap on the right is a really, really cool Lego piece. And if you are trying to collect all the spacemen, I think these are only like one, two pound each. So it's a really easy way to get this yellow spaceman from the mech. We've got a few printed parts as well and some really cool molded parts, especially from Animal Crossings, including the new tree stump and also a light blue cupcake. This is the software I use to validate all the pieces. Note down where they are and I did this to every single one of my pieces and you can see right at the top here we've got two very similar named columns. If you have your own Bricklink store you know exactly where this is going. We have Marker and we have Remarks. Well when I was filling in all these pieces you can see a few of the special elements that my store is holding, some helmets. These bar handle bricks are real, well, they're tiles apparently which is also another feature of this, a tile modified you can see if they're parts, minifigures, really, really handy. These are really, really cool pieces. We've got some leaf elements and a whole load more. As I said, there's like nearly 400 different lots here. But marker is where I was jotting down all of my drawers, which again, we'll take a look at in a second. These letters and numbers do have a pattern to them. And then when I uploaded these onto Bricklink and I thought I would check, just make sure Anyway, as I was saying before the camera so rudely interrupted, uh, when I think we were talking about the drawers. So when I was jotting down what drawer they were in, I was putting them in the marker column. Well, the marker column doesn't actually save any data that's in it. I don't really know what these other columns are used for. There is, so there's like 20, 25 columns here and I have no idea what most of them are used for. Some ones are easy, like the lot ID, the category, the description and the images well, quite explanatory, but as far as marker, remarks, comment also makes sense because I know from experience looking on sites like Bricklink that usually if they have a comment, it's about scratches, wear and tear, or if the minifigures are assembled or not, which I should probably add to my store to let other people know that the minifigures are not assembled. But I feel like new minifigures can't be assembled, otherwise 
they're used at least to the extent of being assembled. Anyway, I digress. I was putting all the drawers in the marker column and then I re-downloaded all 1,545 pieces. It's not as bad as it sounds. There's only 384 of them different items in the list and in the quantities add up to the over one and a half thousand. There were no draw markings. This is Brick Store. Now, when you are trying to upload your items, usually you'll have already had one clicked and it'll be the last one that you left a remark for. When you go to upload this, it's only going to upload the selected item. So what you want to do is control A, select everything. And as you can see over on the left, just to check we've got everything selected, 384 lots, 1,545 pieces. I have seen them numbers so many times. I know they're correct. And it's actually saying the total value of my store is 161 pound, 2.2 pence, which would be really, really nice if this all when I woke up tomorrow and had to pack all this and send it out. But I know that's not going to be, some of these pieces might even be here next year. I'm going to make a list. I have this file saved with the inventory at the time it has been saved, just in case something did end up going wrong. And yes, the save file does not keep the markers either because I really hoped that I could just copy them over. It doesn't work. So make sure you are using remarks and not markers. I learned the hard way. Hopefully I can save you three plus hours, but I'm going to double check, see if we have any of these pieces, at least the weirder ones next year. Of course, if it's a one by two plate, there's a chance that's from a newer set. But some of these motorcycle helmets, which aren't used in Star Wars, these plant leaves, there's a bunch of love hearts and some newer animal crossing either colors or molds. I'll have a double check next year and see if we've got any of these pieces remaining. Last week's video, it was about a week ago, I think, when I started this whole process and showed off all of the sets. I don't know if I disclosed how much I spent and I don't think I included the packing materials because I have upped the shipping a couple pence more than what Royal Mail will be charging me to then ship them out. That's pretty much covered in the shipping, but all the Lego sets I got in last week's video cost me £80, which when you think I must have got about six, seven sets for £80, that's pretty good. That's one decently sized Lego Star Wars set. So I'm really happy I managed to pick up all of them on the sales. I think the two trucks were on a two for 30, which was really good because they're like £25 each. And then I also bought a brand new drawer unit. So my budget for opening this Bricklink store was a hundred pound and that might not seem like a lot to some of you who that is a day's worth of work and we're not quite there with the lego i really wish the lego was earning a fraction of that in a day but if i can start this on just a hundred pound budget and to be fair knock off one of the sets and that covers pretty much all the packing material that hundred pound i've invested in the bricklink store is worth about £160 at the minute. And as that number gets chipped away and people are ordering, I'm going to be looking out for more sales, perhaps some Star Wars sets, depending on what you fancy in the comments. Of course, Star Wars sets are going for a bit more and I won't be actually selling the set. So perhaps it's a cheaper way if I uploaded all the pieces, you could just buy a ton of sets cheaper than their retail price. That could be quite handy if you're trying to army build early on because some of the minifigures are worth so much it's better just getting a bunch of tanks to line your shelf because especially that Republic fighter tank will look really, really cool in its own clone army or fighter tank army, I guess. But again, that'll depend on your comments. £100 to £160, we've basically doubled the value of the sets just by parting them out. And I think that is definitely for more of the unique pieces. So I don't expect to get £160 again anytime soon because some of the rarer pieces are going to be the hardest to get rid of but definitely check it out there's a few bricks a few plates and i'm sure you'll find something on the brick link store if you don't let me know down in the comments what you like to see in the future and i'll definitely keep that in mind when the profits start rolling in but it has been so so fun my fiance has actually helped me out quite a bit and i did get two animal crossing sets for her birthday so i did let her keep the julian from julian's party and julian doesn't have his hat but one of the other two sets did come with a spare hat. So that has worked out well. We've got two of Julian's party hats on the Bricklink store too. And that is going to be another great thing with the Bricklink store. I can buy a set like the Bark Speeder, keep Keller and Beck, and put the 501st clones even on the Bricklink store. 
I've got quite a few clones over here. I don't know if you can see with the light in, and I don't know if that's made it any better, but I've got quite a few 501st clones, and there are a few clone troopers on the way. Stay tuned for a another clone army update i seem to be pumping out so many army videos and the next one will be the droids after we've gone back to the clones but i've got so many of them not just on here but i also have a lego head under my desk with a few we've got the massive captain rex up here and i even have a few of my clone troopers on display so i'd love to be at a point with a bricklink store where i can buy clone trooper sets and sell the clone troopers for less than the sets because Hopefully I'll also be earning from the parts that I put up and that can fund bigger sets, better sets and eventually, who knows, UTS minifigures might be able to get on there. So I actually wrapped up the video a while ago and completely forgot to show you how the draw system works. So if you've used Excel or Google Sheets or any sort of software like that and having a math degree myself, I do like to look at things with a techie computer style to it. That is the system I've used. So you might recognize this. We've got columns here that go A, B, C, D, E, F. For the bigger drawers at the bottom, I know you're wondering, I haven't gone with A, B, C. I've gone with A, C, E and lined it to the left drawer. Though the reason I've done that is because if I go down to this drawer and I've accidentally named a drawer F7, I know it's E7 and it's gonna be the same drawer. It just saves with any confusion. And then if I get another unit to go below this, I can continue the A to F or perhaps start from G and go onwards on the right. But I've done the letters for the top, for the columns and for the rows, the numbers. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, the reason I've gone six, seven, eight and not done six, a ten, because this does take up the same space as the five above it is because I get these units from home base and there's none of these units that have all small drawers or all big drawers. They are all six by five small drawers at the top and then three by three big drawers at the bottom. So even if I got one next to it, they're gonna be the exact same as this. So we've got one, two, eight, and then for the different sections in the drawers, well, we've got a front section, we've got a back section. So I've labeled them F and B. For instance, this drawer here is on the third column so we're looking at c it's one two three four five six seven drawers down c seven and if we wanted these pieces here don't worry i have washed my hands i'm washing my hands way too much when handling these bricks but i gotta make sure they're in the pristine condition for use purchasing them we've got c seven b or c seven back if it was the front it would be an f and it's such an easy way of just finding certain bricks you can see so many of these drawers are filled with well different bricks especially this one with all the different slopes but there are some patterns to it like the flowers at the top similar to my own collection these giant flower heads are actually in two colors and i don't mean the pink and green i mean there's two different shades of pink in there some of that is going to be really hard when trying to find all your orders but we've got a lot of plates we've got a load of bricks we've got some of these really cool base plates as well so definitely check it out and this is what i mean by the minifigures so we have printed parts which i have bagged up just so they don't scratch each other they are the animal crossing tokens in there we've got the sticker sheets at the back as well the smaller ones go up here so they can't get misplaced or they don't come out with any of the bigger ones and then the minifigures here here we have the race car driver and you can see that they are a product of parts and none of these minifigures are built. We also have the Spaceman as well, which was the first set that we cracked open and they are all in their individual bags. I guess if any of you do want specific parts from these minifigures, I could break them down into parts. But as I said, you're looking at one, two pound for these minifigures. So I'll probably keep them up as characters. And yeah, hopefully that gives you a better insight to just how I lay out my bricks. Alternatively, if you don't have the space for a drawer unit, you can just fill these in a bigger Ziploc bag, keep them all in a box. And honestly, if I didn't have that spot on the wall, it's definitely what I would have done. There's only one piece that doesn't fit over here. And it's actually all the way down here in the dark depths of the room. You can see I also keep the instructions. So if anyone wants the instructions, again, just let me know in the comments though. I will say 
I have scanned the QR codes and earned the 20 points for myself. So they are not by any means new instructions, but we have this tub down here. And as you can see, I have penned overflow on it. And these are the pieces that don't fit in this big drawer unit. This is a new tub, even though it actually looks a bit off colored compared to this clearer plastic, but it's only a cheap one. And we've got the Technic beams in there at the minute. And that is everything that doesn't fit in these drawers because a lot of the longer elements are flexible enough to just curve round without hurting or breaking any of the pieces this by the way was one of the i don't know if it's the it's the one that doesn't hold its shape so that's all right being put like that and these hooks as well are from the lego heart that i got which a really, really interesting piece, especially if you're trying to make a bridge or some sort over your Star Wars mocks. But if there's anything else you'd like to know about how I store Lego, or perhaps there's something else that you have an issue with, like some of the bigger parts, like these tires, taking up two whole drawers just because they're different sizes and that's not even all of my wheel elements. So definitely let me know down in the comments and hopefully I can provide you information, if not right away in a future video when I have a similar problem myself. If you'd like any more tips on opening the BrickLink store, there are another two softwares that Kiwi Brick Exchange mentioned. And one of them was to do with orders. So when I get my first orders, perhaps I can add that to the next video. And also the other one is to do with Brick Owl. So let me know if you'd like me to add my account over to Brick Owl as well, add a storefront there. It will be the exact same pieces, thanks to that bit of software from Kiwi Brick Exchange. And check them out. They are a New Zealand BrickLink store, but they're a much more experienced store than I am. But stay tuned and may the bricks be with you always.